y'all welcome back to my channel thanks so much for clicking on this video please do me a favor and thumbs up this video thank you and you can also make your way over to the left or the right to that little square red rectangle that says subscribe yeah click subscribe do that too do that too help me out help me out help my channel grow help my channel grow help my channel grow okay enough of that anywho welcome 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 back y'all welcome back to my channel today we're talking about episode five of season three of the show pose which is currently streaming on stars network and amazon and a whole bunch of other places so if you're into it there's plenty of places out there where you can find it trust you me but either who it's the last season and the tone of the show has definitely shifted and changed a lot so you know is that a good thing is that a bad thing i'm still not sure but i'm open and i'm just here for the ride until the very end i've been with this show since the beginning and i'm gonna see it all the way through no matter what these writers throw at me no matter what type of outlandish and interesting story ideas they throw my way i'm here for it keep going y'all keep going keep going i think they want to take us into this fantasy realm um and i guess that's not really the worst thing in the world although it is really different from what a lot of us fans signed up for when the show first aired i saw it as kind of giving us a window into ballroom culture and into the lives of like trans women and black queer women um queer black people in general uh from a certain era right i thought we were gonna get always get the balls there were no balls in this episode at all and i thought we were just gonna kind of get like inside look into this world that we don't normally see but what we got with this episode was something completely different from that and i don't know how to feel about it because i've seen a lot of the reviews online people really didn't like this episode because they felt like it was super unrealistic and delved too much into like the fantasy but like i said is that a bad thing i mean it is television and it was entertaining so I don't know who am I to judge I'm just here for the fashions honey and the fashions the fashions from beginning to end from scene one to the very last scene were absolutely stunning now y'all know it is impossible for me to shoot a video without somebody riding by on a motorcycle because I live in Best Eye Brooklyn and it is the summertime and the hotter it gets the louder it's gonna get at least it's not fireworks right Let's talk about the show. So, it's 1994 and Electra is rich. She's moved on up and she's looking at a deluxe apartment in the sky. It's got three bedrooms, one of which will be her walk-in cedar closet. She's living the high life. She's living her best life. She's making tons of tons and tons of money. She's shopping her ass off. She's got a driver with the top with the little hat and everything you know she's bought so much clothes that she needs a whole nother car for her clothes and she says you know what i always knew i was going to be rich i always knew that i was going to be living the good life i had a psychic tell me that i was a queen in a past life like this was meant to be and it's about time now how is electra so rich how does she make all this money <sighs> I could definitely believe that there could be a super rich black trans woman queen serving you dynasty serving you dallas serving you high-end fashions giving you alexis carrington soap opera diva realness that's completely believable right the part that made me kind of go say what now is that Electra's working with the mob. Um, she is laundering their drug money and they are investing in her phone sex business. So they have a kind of like underground, secretive, but not so secretive, because she tells the whole family, um, business partnership thing going on. Now, 
Miss Orlando, turns out, has been on the come up for a minute. Now, if y'all remember, Miss Orlando was looking busted in seasons one and two. Um, she was super helpful and kind of sketch uh, because she was doing the illegal butt injections for the girls and making people sick. But she's also the one who came through in a clutch when that whole dead body situation, like she's the one who mummified old boy who was hanging out in Electra's closet for dead for years, right? The corpse, like, and she never told anybody that body was in Electra's closet for like four years. So, you know, so it's like, can we count on Miss Orlando? Can we trust her? I guess. But one thing I'm curious about is did they have this look and this plan for her for season three like from the very beginning like was it part of was it supposed to be her little story arc because she looks so different from how she looked when we first met her like that glow up was real <laughs> the makeup was on point the hair the nails like everything compared to how she was looking before <laughs> Mr. Orlando got the glow up like she upgraded so, you know, there's this situation now where Electra's working with the mob and she's letting the whole family know, like, I made all this money on my own. I didn't have to rely on a man. I didn't have to lay on my back to do this. I did it with my mind, like my hustle spirit, my business sense, my personality. And if I want a man, I can just hire one right hot chocolate beautiful boy toy at the end of the table whatever you say miss electra so miss electra is doing her thing and what i want for miss electra for mother electra is um a lawyer on retainer and a nest egg of at least 100k in the bank because when these mafiosos turn on you um you need to be ready and I just don't trust it. Maybe it's because I saw that horse in the bed and because I know about Fredo. Y'all saw that movie. Like, you don't need to be trusting these dudes and y'all know way too you know way too much about them. They knew too much about you. It just feels messy, right? Now, I don't even know if this is... This might be based on a true story. A part of me doesn't really think so but you never know maybe there were trans women who worked with the mob who ran a phone sex company maybe but anyway it is what it is so we get the opening teaser and then we see angel and poppy and they're in bed and angel's looking at a bridal magazine looking luxurious and fresh face and poppy's like hey there hey there look at this look at this mmm we said we were gonna get married. I've always wanted a winter wedding. It's winter. All right, let's do it. Let me get a dress. Let's go down to City Hall. Let's ask Blanca to be our witness. And then we can get dim sum after. Yes, honey, small and intimate, cute. You know we love it. Even, even if I can't find a dress I can afford, I could probably find something through Poppy's job, right? Poppy is a casting agent. He works with models and designers, so he has access to different looks. So, hey, we got the situation all planned out. We're going to get married on New Year's Eve, and let's just, like, tell the fam. So, boom. Now we're at Blanca's place. All the furniture is gone. Now, I think it was flea infested. I don't know if Mother Electra was being shady or if it was actually flea infested, but either way, all the furniture is gone and Electra has come into the building with a whole bunch of new furniture. Once again, gorgeous visuals. Like, for a visual slut like me, this episode was actually very, very satisfying because, like I said, I don't necessarily need a story to make sense if the costumes are on point. And that sounds really superficial, um, but 
that's what I care about when it comes to this medium. When it comes to TV and film, that's what I care about the most is like the costumes and the set design. So when they brought in that couch, I was like, oh, that's a nice couch. And then when they brought in the coffee table and then that dining room table with the glass top, I was kind of like, oh, and then the nice chairs, the rattan, rattan chairs um, for the dining room chairs. It was just like, I was like, yeah. Mama Electra hooked it up. Only the best for my daughter. So the girls are sitting down for dinner and it's really cute because it's like girl time, sister time, mother daughter time, Lulu, Angel, Electra, Blanca, wine, a fancy meal from a fancy restaurant that Electra had brought in. And, Elect and Blanca's like, you know, Thank you so much, mother. You know, you've come into all this money and you could have like left us in the dust, but you're taking care of us and you haven't forgotten us and you you still continue to look out for us and you still continue to take care of us. And I just want to thank you so much um, for all the gifts and all the things that you've done for us like today and over the years. And, and Electra's like, well, I have gifts for all of you. And Lulu says, what do you have for me? And she says, a trip to rehab. Ooh. Now, now y'all know one of the things that's always been consistent about Electra is that she stays keeping it real. So she let it be known. You still look like a crackhead. You're not fooling me and you need help. Like you still look like you're on drugs. And this is what I want to give to you. And it wasn't no shade because Lulu is still not looking right, right? So Lulu's like, well, I am so sick and tired of all y'all shitting on me and I'm doing really good. I'm doing the numbers for Pat Field and I have a boo now. Now, first of all, Patricia Field is the same person um, who does the costuming for Sex in the City. And she's also the person who does the um, costuming for Run the World, the other show that I'm doing, recapping for this channel. So um, yeah, she used to have a shop in the village that I would go to, to try to find cute stuff on sale. Like Patricia Field is basically like a Manhattan icon, a fashion icon. So, you know, I thought that was a cute name drop. And then the guy she's dating is the bouncer from the script club. His name is Jerome. Now, it doesn't sound like Jerome is somebody that she needs to be taking seriously because Mother Electra was like, that cocaine must be burning your brain cells because you sound fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Yo, Electra keeps it too real all the time and I love her for that. Um, she, does, she doesn't mean to be abusive or harmful. She's just like, gives it to you straight. So they're arguing back and forth. And Blanca, the cool water, like Blanca is Miss Cool Water. And one of the things I really enjoy about the show is the relationship between Blanca and Electra. They have something special going on, and I noticed that a couple of times throughout this episode, like Blanca just kind of giving her like side eye, like I know you're up to something, and Electra's like, yes I am, and you'll find out when you're meant to find out. Like it's just, they have a back and forth, and they have a rapport, and it's been that way for a while, and it kind of makes sense why Electra was so pissed back in season one when Blanca said she was leaving. She was hurt. She was hurt and she showed it through her rage. But anywho, so this video is gonna be way too long. I'm gonna try to make it quick. So, um, so they're talking and Angel's like, yeah, I'm, we're gonna, gonna get married, right? Because Electra says, what can I do for you, daughter? What's your dream? After Blanca calms them down, right? And Angel's like, I have everything I need. And she's like, actually, I have some good news. We set the wedding date. We're gonna get married New Year's Eve, and this is how we're gonna do it. And Electra's like, mm, that sounds like a horrible plan. Let me give you a fucking bomb-ass glamorous wedding, because you deserve. You're one of the first of us 
who's gonna have an actual wedding so we need to do it up in style okay okay and angel's like okay so you know blanca says her blanca she says one of her blanca isms look at us a model a nurse, an accountant, a mogul. And I'm like, yes, honey, yes, I live, I live, I live, I love it. So Angel runs home, she tells Poppy, Electra offered to pay for anything, but Poppy's not feeling it because he's like, I'm the man, like I'm supposed to be taking care of you, I'm supposed to be paying for, for, for everything, and you know, I don't need people like, starting us off on that type of note where we're like a fucking charity and angel's like this is what i want this is what's happening Electra's gonna pay for all of it and i want doves and hors d'oeuvres and men in nice suits and all that shit at the four seasons it's my day right <laughs> and you know miss india acted her ass off in this scene their ass off i think india uses they them pronouns so such good acting, you know, and I like how when they're um, they get upset, they p work their accent a little more. It's like really cute. So Angel goes to Electra's job and he goes off like, how dare you? I don't want you to pay for nothing, blah, blah, blah. Blanca's there. She calms him down. They convince him to change his mind. Like technically the mother of the bride is supposed to pay for everything. That's their tradition. If, you, if it'll make you feel any better, you can pay for the rice and whatnot and the quartet. And the Angel's like, yeah, I guess the rice is the most important part of the ceremony. It's not, but whatever. So we move on to... Um, oh, one of the things I wrote down is, could we get a spinoff of the four girls? Like something very like living single, waiting to exhale, kind of sex in the city-ish with the four girls, Lulu, Blanca, Angel, Electra. That would be interesting. But anywho, so they move on and they go to the Dable's Bridal Shop. Not the Dable's Bridal. Lulu says Dable's Bridal. Electra says, hell no. They go to this fancy bridal shop and we have this really nice scene where we get to see all the girls in a whole bunch of beautiful gowns and they're being waited on by this young cutie named Dominique. And they get to the point where um, Angel finds the perfect dress, right? After trying on so many gorgeous dresses and looking absolutely perfect in every single one. Um, we also get to see all of them in gorgeous. It was a really beautiful scene. It was really cute and it was like, I couldn't ask for another. So that was that was a fun little throwback. I remember really loving that song. Um, and this is when it became, it went back to that realistic place because when they finally picked a dress and Dominique went to get the owner because they wanted to celebrate like the purchase of this dress. Mind you, this dress probably cost like 15K. Um, Electra pulls out her credit card and hands it over to the man and he's like, what the fuck is this? Like, I wouldn't take your money. I wouldn't take a million dollars from you for you to make a mockery. These designers are artists and they don't want to, they only want to see real women wearing their dresses. And Lulu says, I'll give you a real beating. How about that? I like that line. Um, so yeah, so they end up leaving because this dude is not willing to sell them the dress and it was really hurtful and really violent because Electra literally said to him like you don't have to believe in us like you don't have to support our cause you don't have to be a part of our movement or even respect us just take out just take the money so we can buy the fucking dress like mm, mm, there's something about that that was too real like this is something i want and i know you don't deserve this cash but this is something i want to get for my child Ooh, that part pissed me off and dominique uh ended up quitting get ready for the next appointment you get ready i quit he took off his blazer swung it over his coat and walked out with his head held high i was like yes honey yes you know that was, <laughs> ooh, it was so, but that read, Electra gave him one of her um, legendary reads, that dress owner.
but she said to him watch your neck and I'm like uh, considering what happens later I hope that it's not traced back to her because uh, basically Electra had the mafia guys break into the boutique and steal all the dresses now this was another moment that didn't feel very realistic because maybe they would be doing the business together but would they go through all that trouble for her like robbing a wedding dress store uh i don't know i guess but in the meantime in between time we have this um young woman named Jimena who visits poppy at work and she's from the old neighborhood and she's like you've come up in the world you got white people working for you now and Poppy's like, yeah, I'm doing okay. So she says, I need to talk to you. They go out into the park. And I loved her whole look. The Timberland boots, the tight jeans, the puffy jacket, the dark lipstick. Really beautiful actress. She says, um, you know, Marisol, um, Poppy's ex-girlfriend, died. She OD'd. And she left behind a son, a five-year-old boy and his name is Beto and he's your son Poppy like you're a Poppy Poppy you're a Poppy so <laughs> Poppy at first he kind of doesn't believe it but something that she says convinces him because she's like oh she was a druggie but she didn't sleep around uh, okay either way Poppy needs to do a drug test point blank period that's just how I feel about it not to say she slept around but just, you gotta make sure that the kid is yours, anything is possible. So, anywho, Poppy's like, yeah, can I see him? And it was it was a really beautiful, uh, tear-jerking, kind of heartfelt scene. And it was a scene similar to a scene that took place in another film that is kind of classic and iconic, uh, Forrest Gump. Ever heard of it? So, I don't know if they did that on purpose. Maybe it was a tribute. But anywho, it was something that happened in Forrest Gump, and it's also something that happened in this. Um, but Angel did an excellent job, like, acting in that role. I really felt him. I really felt for him. And I could see that, okay, now that he's met this boy, he's not going to let this go. Like, he's going to want to take this kid. And it's obvious that Jimena, Marisol's sister, is kind of struggling with raising this boy by herself you know it's obvious that she needs help she needs support and poppy is on the come up so you know he could provide beto with the things that mary soul probably cannot so boom in the meantime in between time uh we have the girls you know having their bachelorette party they're at the four seasons they're getting mud baths they're getting steam they're getting massages they're sitting by the pool and then it's the bridal showers dinner party with all the girls looking stunning and you know Blanca gives this uh, one of her heartfelt speeches it's filled with Blanca isms that are all very like beautiful hallmark poetic metaphoric y'all know how Blanca is she's just like all in her feelings all the time probably a cancer or a Pisces just giving you emotions and then angel gives her little speech like you know finally one of us gets to be the romantic hero in the story not the joke not the outsider and angel's little speech when she said that i had to write that down because i was kind of like mm, this is what this episode is about right electra as the fairy godmother angel as the princess and the hero heroine and the romantic interest and the girl that's loved in the story right this is what this episode is about this is the story that they're giving us it's no longer the harshness and the roughness of new york city it's like we're thriving and surviving one of us has become a millionaire maybe at least and she's hooking all of us up so that we can really feel like how we deserve to feel like walking runway at the ball walking bridal runway at the ball is was us dreaming now 
that dream has become real. So I was like, okay, I kind of get what's happening here. Like, when do we get to see this um, in a show? When do we get to see a trans woman as the ideal and as the one that's loved and cared for and not struggling and not dying or being beaten, being harmed? So, yeah, that's fine. Um, so all of the dresses come out, like not only as Angel gonna wear, get to wear a dress, a wedding, but all of you get to wear a dress. You get a dress and you get a dress and you get a dress and you get a dress. A bunch of gowns, right? How did you pull this off, mother? Mother has her ways. Yeah, mother's got the mafia. Mm, I don't know. So, anywho, Angel comes home. Oh, there's a whole scene with strippers, which is kind of like whatever i guess but after after the dinner party but angel comes home and poppy's sitting there and he's you know smoking what looks like reefer all right he got a lot on his mind he's a daddy now and he um you know he's got to plan his future like time to take life a little bit more seriously right so angel's like oh you didn't have to wait up for me baby and he's like yeah you know I'm not necessarily waiting up for you. I have to tell you something and it's kind of important. And she's like, oh, you don't want to marry me. And he's like, no, that's not it. And I thought it was kind of funny that she went there. Like, she still, it's still hard for her to believe. And he's like, no, actually, um, Marisol, the girl that I was messing with before our, our relationship started, um, I saw her sister today and she's, she died she od'd and you can see india's face acting is really good because you can see that she feels sad at first when she finds out that this woman has died and then poppy says um she has a son and it's mine that's when she kind of starts to look a little like oh no so <laughs> Poppy's like, yeah, and I want him to raise him. I want to raise him. I want him to come and live with us. Now, um, Angel says, well, you know, maybe later, but not now. Like, now is not a good time because I'm still working on my sobriety and I've been doing a really good job. And Angel, you know, she... I saw a couple people say that she, she came off kind of selfish in this scene and i don't agree um because being a mom to a child that's not yours is a huge commitment and being a mom when you're dealing with um still trying to conquer and navigate the fact that you're a drug addict uh is a lot to take in kids are very very stressful and they make could make you want to do drugs because yeah um you know and I didn't think she was being selfish. I thought she was being a little bit dramatic because she walked out on him. Like, she should have been willing to talk about it. Like, maybe he could stay with us part-time and stay with his auntie. Like, let's talk about it and work something out. But the fact that she was just like, no, no, no. <laughs> and left. <laughs> like... And, you know, meanwhile, like, Poppy is, like, on his knees, like, please. And he said something, which is factual, which is that I've been by your side through so many things. Now it's time for you to step up and be by my side, right? Because she literally played Angel for a, for a while, and... When she dealt with that uh, fashion photographer who took those dirty pictures of her, Angel was there to kick that photographer's ass and get those photos back. Um, when she was dealing with her drug addiction, Angel was like by her side trying to help her figure out a way to get clean. Like, you know, all this up and down stuff with her modeling career. Like, you know, Poppy's really been there for her and he's been consistently like, you know, you are it for me, period. Like, you are what I've wanted. You're what I want to be with. Like, it's obvious that he feels like Angel's his soulmate. And Angel really hasn't had to do that much to prove her love for him. 
So I get what he was saying, like, now is your time to be there for me. But raising a kid is, um, it's a lot. It's a lot. So I understand. And yeah, that's pretty much where the show ended. So let me make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, yeah, I talked about the strippers a little bit. I didn't really like that stripper scene. That was like my least favorite scene in the film or the show, actually. And, and once again, just like the fashions, the blue fur coat, uh, Blanca's dress, um, when they were in the office, um, Angel, like just, God, whew, the fashion in this show is just stunning. The music was perfect as always. And yeah, the storyline is just like a fairy tale. It's just like a fantasy fairy tale where, you know, the girls get to come out on top for once, like, and the girls get to win for once, and the girls get to be glamorous and luxurious and pampered for once. Like, we love to see it. We want to see it in real life. I want to see it in my life. Hey, anywho, this video is way too long, so I'm going to stop here, but I thank you for watching, and don't remember to like and subscribe, and leave a comment, too. Thanks, y'all. Bye.